video is sponsored by Lexar. The Sony 135G Master is probably my all-time favorite portrait lens. The only problem, it's $2,100. It's just too expensive to justify owning it, given that it's not the most versatile focus range. So instead, I've rented it out a bunch and I've absolutely loved every time I've used it. But what if you could get this legendary Sony portrait lens for less than half the price? Well, maybe now you can. This is the Viltrox 135mm f1.8 Lab. It's the first of Viltrox's new Lab series, which attempts to have flagship level quality for a fraction of the cost. So the question is, does this Lab series lens really hold its own against a G Master? Or is it just another budget option that fouls a little bit short? Let's find out. A quick disclaimer. Viltrox did send me this lens to test out, but when doing reviews here on YouTube, my policy remains the same. They have no say in what I say, and they don't get to see this video before you do. The Sony G Master I rented from Pictureline, which is my local camera shop. If you're in Utah, they're great. So this is allegedly the first in their lab series of lenses that, as I understand, will serve as essentially their flagship lens lineup. Okay, so let's start off with a comparison of the build quality. Typically with budget lenses, you have to give up something from a build perspective. Maybe it's plastic construction or it's noisy focus motors, missing some control functionality, or you know something has to give. But the Viltrox somehow seems to buck this trend. When you look at this lens, it's honestly hard to tell that it's not a Sony G Master. The build material feels almost identical and it even has that same little kind of textured coating. Just like on the Sony, the Viltrox has two focus hold buttons, a manual focus switch, and a focus limiter switch. Though they're all slightly cheaper than what we get on a G Master. The biggest build difference is that obviously the Viltrox is quite a bit bigger, coming in at 1300 grams compared to 950 for the Sony. Where the Viltrox has departed the most from a design perspective compared to the Sony is the aperture ring. The Sony has a declickable aperture ring with markings and hard stops at both ends. The Viltrox, on the other hand, does have a click switch, but it's a free spinning motorized ring that's used to adjust the aperture. Changing it from clicked versus not clicked doesn't actually change the resistance of that ring, and it doesn't lock the aperture into place. It just provides a little bit of tactile feedback. And rather than displaying the aperture with markings on the lens, the Viltrox has included an LCD screen on the top of the lens to display the aperture, focus distance, whether you're in manual or autofocus, and then the focus limiter settings. You can actually add some additional customization to this LCD screen through the Viltrox app, which includes the ability to add a custom wake up message when you turn on the camera. Kind of a gimmick, but honestly, I also kind of dig it. Having all the necessary functions at your fingertips when you're shooting makes so much sense. And when I'm reviewing lenses, I'm often very quick to dock a lens points if it's missing any of these things. My one gripe with that aperture ring is the free spinningness, free spinningness of it free spinningness of it. If I'm on clicked aperture, it's because I want to make sure that my actual aperture doesn't accidentally get changed. But on the Viltrox, setting it into click doesn't actually prevent the aperture from being changed accidentally. It's also hard to see what your aperture is on the lens unless you're directly over the lens because the little triangle that shows you the selection of the aperture moves across the screen rather than remaining stationary. And even if you're angled very slightly away from straight top down, you actually can't see that small little triangle. Now, next I wanna talk about autofocus, but first I wanna show you this. As photographers, we take a lot of photos, but as we've started to settle down here in Utah, I've been taking a lot of what I call moments wow. that matter photos. Photos that aren't ever gonna show up on the Instagram feed, but mean a lot to me. So rather than having them just sit on a hard drive, I wanted a way to look at them all the time. So I recently got the Pexar Digital Picture Frame by Lexar. The Pexar is a 2K digital frame with an anti-glare coating. So you can place it anywhere you wanna see your photos around the house with either the included wall mounts or the magnetic stand that allows for both landscape or portrait orientation. It's super easy to upload your images to the frame as well. You can either do so via the Framio app or use an SD card to store up to 32 gigabytes of images. Or if you want some extra space, there's an expandable storage up to one terabyte using SD or USB drive. I actually got one of these for my dad as a gift. So now Britta and I can just send him photos from our recent trips or 
new photos of the dog. Holidays are coming up and it's honestly the perfect gift for either yourself or a family member. So I'll leave a link in the description and a huge thank you to Lexar for sponsoring today's video. Now, throughout the course of this shoot, I was really interested to see how each lens would perform from an autofocus perspective. Moving really big pieces of glass around in this type of lens is quite difficult. And even Sony on their older 85G Master had some difficulty doing it. So the Viltrox has what they're calling their new Hyper VCM motor, which is allegedly their best, fastest, and quietest motor that they've ever made. When the camera isn't on, you can actually hear a few of those elements knocking around, which is a little bit unnerving, if I'm being honest, but once you turn it on, the motors kick in and it's all good. I will say when focusing, there is a little bit of sound to those motors. I actually did not notice it when I was out and shooting in the field, so I don't think it's something that you'd notice on a practical level, but if you're ever in a quiet room, you can definitely hear it. I don't think this matters too much for photos, but I wanted to see if it would be picked up by an on-camera microphone. So here is the audio of the lens focusing with a shotgun mic on the camera. I don't think this is a deal breaker, and I imagine that most of the folks in the market for a 135 are probably using it for stills, but when we consider that the Sony 135 is completely silent, it is something to keep in mind. The real important thing about autofocus is how well that autofocus performs. I was using the Sony a7CR since it's got the latest and greatest AI autofocus. I was expecting to see some drop off in performance when switching between the Sony and Viltrox, and honestly, I did not notice any at all. There were a few times when Erica's face was completely covered, so it focused on her hat instead of her face, but then as soon as just a little bit of her face was revealed, it locked onto her face once again with no problems. We we're also shooting through some tall grass to kind of create some more depth, and there was a couple of moments when the grass caught the focus, but when I was doing the Sony, it did the same thing there as well, so I don't think it's fair to knock the Viltrox for that. They both did the same thing. I would say the Viltrox is a little bit less responsive on the video side. Like it's fairly responsive, but it's just a little bit slower in general. Okay, so build, solid. Autofocus, impressive. You subscribing to this channel, also impressive. But the important thing about the lens is, is image quality. From a sharpness perspective, I am super impressed here. Like, let's do something fun. I'm actually gonna just put up two images and I want you to guess which one is the Sony and which one is the Viltrox. Here's lens A and lens B. And then here they are each at 100%. Now let's do one other example, lens A and lens B. And then here they are again at 100%. I want you to comment below which one you think is which and I'll reveal the answer in just a second. Overall, I am super impressed with how razor sharp this thing is. And I think the reason that 135 is one of my favorite portrait lenses is that you compare that level of sharpness and detail while making the background just sort of completely disappear when you're wide open. So maybe it makes sense to talk about the bokeh. Both lenses feature an 11 bladed aperture. And now I'm sure there's gonna be some reviewers out there that are gonna do controlled tests in their studio to test the bokeh, but to me, that's pretty boring. Taking a look at these images in the field, I honestly think I prefer the Viltrox to the Sony, which is crazy to say. Both are really solid, but I think the Viltrox actually keeps the circular shape a little bit better while the Sony is a little bit more cat's eyed. These two were from the Viltrox where I accidentally shot at two, f2.2. So like, remember how I was saying that you, you know, you want to not bump the aperture ring, this can happen, but still the outcome is super pleasing. And then this one, I intentionally shot the grass in the foreground. So it wasn't an autofocus issue. I just think it really well illustrates the bokehlicious goodness of the Viltrox. We were also shooting in a lot of backlit scenarios, and I was actually surprised to see that in a lot of those instances, the Viltrox actually seemed to do a better job of retaining contrast. I feel like this is one area that G Masters typically excel, so again, I'm very surprised to see how well the Viltrox did. So yeah, all around, image quality, fantastic. Now, at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that the biggest issue with the Sony 135 was the price of $2,100 US. Well, the Viltrox comes in at just 899 US, which is honestly bonkers to me. Like, sure, there's some minor annoyances with the focus noise and the aperture ring being a little less than perfect, but for half the price, it suddenly becomes an insane value. Like, it's full of features that almost no budget lens has. I do think perhaps the size might scare off some folks because this certainly is a pretty beastly lens. But I don't know, you tell me, you've seen the images. Do you think the extra weight is worth the substantial savings? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, and by the way, lens A, 
was the Viltrox and lens B was the Sony. All right, peace.